Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Getting Inside the Right Male Mind. I'm Lisa Shield. And I'm Benjamin Shield. And it's great to see you. We hope you have, are having a wonderful start to 2022. Uh, we have a terrific topic today. That we, we actually started talking about it right before the broadcast, and we really got deeply into this subject. So I hope that we can capture a lot of that in this conversation today. Today, we're going to continue last week's conversation around ways to derail a date. And today we have three more for you. So <laughs> I don't know why we're dividing this into chunks of three, but it seems to work. So babe, let's start with number one. Well, I've been on dates, and I think most men have been on dates where they've sat across from a woman, and could be a, a wonderful woman, attractive, interesting, but we're faced with a series of interview questions. And it's like rote questions, like, you know, superficial, like, um, what do you do? Where do you live? Do you rent or own? You know, do you like dogs? You know, all these things. And it's just like one question after another, after another. And it sends a man into his head rather than into his heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so interviewing on a date, like just having a list of interview questions. Yeah. 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 It's just, and it's boring. It's boring. And the man has the feeling that the woman has asked the same questions on every date she's been on, mm -hmm. that, that there's not this real interest and curiosity about him, about right. who he is and what his deepest interests are. Yeah, and they go nowhere, mm -hmm. nowhere. Um, I felt that, um, you know, I've been with people, you meet them, and even just like a neighbor or, you know, somebody that you meet and you just, yeah. it's so superficial mm -hmm. and uninspired. Well, where did you go? Where did you grow up? And, yeah. and you feign interest <laughs> because you're trying to connect, right. but it, it's empty. You know, I used to imagine that there, you know, and wish there could be one of these credit card machines uh -huh. right, right in the middle of the table. <laughs> And, you know, the credit cards that have the magnetic stripe right. that has all the information, you know, where you live, you know, probably your FICA score and all of those <laughs> things, you know, uh, and and we could just swipe our cards right. and just download all that superficial information and then get down to really, really knowing each other. Yeah, it's interesting. And it's kind of like a resume. People think that that is getting to know you, mm. but it, it, it's getting to know the most superficial part of you, yeah. but not really connecting. I think also what men often feel when there's an interview is that a woman is on a fact finding mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like she wants, she's, she's trying to suss out, you know, who you are, how much money you make, yeah. <laughs> what your relationship with your ex-wife is like. Yeah. And, you know, did you have a bad childhood? It's almost like she's in her head trying to mm -hmm. tick off those boxes. And what would be successful mm -hmm. is even one subject that, mm -hmm. that the yeah. both of you can delve deeper into. Whatever it is, it could be about a movie. You know, it could be about uh, an event. Um, it's, but something that, that you could both really have a sense of each other's depth mm -hmm. and interest in the world mm -hmm. and re relatability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And something that you had talked about, well, something I talk about in my course, in my 12-week Emotionally Naked Dating course, one of the techniques I give women to get out of the habit of interviewing on dates is that I tell them to pick one topic, something that they can delve deeper into so that it's not the conversation doesn't feel like it's going from topic to topic mm. to topic, but that you take it deeper. Mm. And so you ask 
more questions. Well, tell me more about that. Yeah. And wow, that's very interesting. Uh, I never looked at it that way. You know, I'd love to know more about your perspective on this, yeah. right? And But to keep going deeper and deeper, which takes us to the next point about being insatiably curious. Yeah, you know, a man would love for a woman to really be interested and more than just asking superficial questions like, um, you know, like if you like fly fishing, if man likes fly fishing, uh, not just, well, what's it like and, and where do you go? But rather than how does that touch your heart? You know, what does it feel like when you're in a stream just by mm. yourself and, and having that solitude? Wow. You know, and where you begin to put a man into his imagination, into his heart, uh, rather than in his head just answering questions. Wow. I mean, just as I was listening to you, yeah. I, could, I was trying to think, imagine what it would be like for two people to go on a date like that, you know, and for a woman to really know how to do that with a man mm. sitting across from her and how powerful that is, yeah. right? And I think many people want those kinds of connections to happen magically, but it really is something that we can be intentional about, like being on a date. And if you were talking about the books that you wrote, mm -hmm. right? Instead of just saying, oh, that's really great. What were the titles of the books? Uh -huh. Or tell me about that. like. You wrote four books with your best friend. That must have been a life-defining experience. You know, I, how did this come about? Where did the, you know, the subjects for the books come about? But being deeply interested, you know, who did you interview? What was your favorite person that you interviewed? Right. right. And putting a man in his heart and the excitement of his life allows him to then ask that, that same level, that same depth mm -hmm. and intimacy of, of conversation with the person who's sitting across from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, again, we want it to happen magically, but knowing how to do this, you can then also sit back and start to see what unfolds. If the man can go there with you, if he'll open up, if he'll share with you, or do you just also get very flip answers back or very short answers back. That also will help a woman be able to gauge if a man is emotionally available, right? Right, right. But a man is very likely to really welcome um, an in-depth question. Mm -hmm. you know, something he would. That, that something that's deeply curious because he's not going to get that from his male friends. You know, there, you know, we just don't have that type of conversations that a man can have, can have with a woman. Wow, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, and that's why we we really need a woman in our lives because they touch us, you know, emotionally uh, in a way that that we don't get from, you know, anything else. And so, for a man to be asked, you know, like. Wow, that is fascinating. Uh huh. Uh, that you know, I'm really impressed. You know, a, another guy isn't going to tell another guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. A guy, another guy would never say that. <laughs> but from a woman that you're try that you want to impress, right? Oh, he would feel like a million bucks, a million bucks, and also, you know, maybe express things that he's never said out loud. Oh, yeah. wow, that's so cool. And we were talking earlier as we were having this conversation, <laughs> it made me think of the Dos Equis man, yeah. right? Like if you, if a woman were to go on a date and do this yeah. and make a man feel fascinating, like we know that men want to feel like our heroes. Mm. That's one yeah. thing that we want to make you feel yeah. like you're our hero. But another thing that we really want to do is make a man feel like he is the most fascinating man on the planet. Right. And a woman could do that with any man that she's interested in. Just like, wow, 
you know, you, you know, you're an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> so you you design these incredible machines that that's extraordinary, and it does so much good for the world. I'm wow. so impressed. Rather than say, "Well, oh, you're an engineer, and you 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 design machines," uh huh, oh, uh huh, and then go on to the next question, right? Uh, but to really, because a man is pouring his life into his work, oh. and so for that to be recognized, you know, is extraordinary. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'm blown away. <laughs> really? Because, well, you know, because I literally can't stop saying enough wonderful things about you, right? I mean, to anybody who will listen, <laughs> don't get me started on Benjamin if you don't want me to, to hear me say how fabulous he is. But in our relationship, I am mesmerized by who you are, and I reflect that back to you all the time. Yeah, and it feels amazing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I walk around just feeling like fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you know, it just it buoys me up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it affects everything else in my life. Oh. You know, when I walk into a room, I feel. You know, I feel like an important person. I feel like I a fascinating. Yeah. I love that so yeah. much. Yeah. It makes me feel so good to know that that's the impact it has on yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah. I mean, that's wonderful. All right. So, um, you know, the bottom line mm. is that you are aiming for his heart, for his heart with your questions, not his head. Mm -hmm. right. 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 And it, you know, it could just feel so superficial for both people to be asking questions, to be answering questions with two word answers mm -hmm. and going on to the next question. And um, it's just dreadful. And I think it's one of the reasons why, why some people hate dating. Mm -hmm. And because it's just, it's not interesting. It's the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. And if one can get past the the road questions, the interview questions, into something that that touches some, a man's heart, that both people will be driving home thinking, "Wow, that was a great date." Yeah, and and it would be not like, "What do you do?" You know, you might ask somebody, a man on a date, you know, tell me about your work. But then you want to come have questions like, you know, what, tell me what you love most about your work. What gives you the most fulfillment about what you do? You know, um, yeah, I mean, but making, coming, having meaningful questions about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and reflecting back the wonderful things mm -hmm. about what he's saying. Yeah, like I see you light up when you talk about your work. You uh -huh. know, I love seeing how you just light up. I can tell how passionate you are about, you know, about it, yeah. but reflecting back. Yeah, and his coworkers aren't going to do that for him. Mm -hmm. His male friends aren't going to do that for him. Wow. And his boss isn't going to do that for him, you know. Um, it takes the woman sitting across from him to lean forward and say, wow, yeah. that would light a man up. Yeah. Oh, God, you're such an amazing man. Yeah. You know, I have so much respect for you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's go to the next one. All right. <laughs> so this is another one on a completely different subject. Uh -huh. Show, when a woman shows up overdressed and overstylized for a date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You know, I think what a man is looking for when he first meets that first impression is that a woman is going to be relatable, that he's going to be comfortable with her, that they share the same, much the same frequency 
mm-hmm. you know, personal frequencies. Um, so if a guy comes in, you know, appropriately dressed, and there's a woman, you know, walking in or already sitting there, but hopefully walking in, um, who's so stylized and so made up, yeah, um, that it almost seems like a costume, or it seems like someone that that is just not in his world, in his in his uh, orbit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably it's much better to dress more simply, especially on a first date. We'll get into that in a minute. But one thing that you had mentioned earlier was that you know a woman might be trying to show a man by dressing up that she has taste and style, but any classy man would assume that she'd be high maintenance and insecure. Yeah. You know, you just see someone just dressed, you know, with jewelry and really expensive couture that is it, it's thought was, might be, wow, I may have to be supporting that. You know, well, and she may, she may look materialistic, uh-huh. mm-hmm. right? Right. Like it would give the impression of being materialistic. It's one thing, you know, well, yeah. Yeah, and a guy will see the outfit more than the person. Mm-hmm. You know, if a woman comes in dressed casually, you know, but appropriately, you know, depending on the, the event, um, he sees the person and he could be comfortable with them. It's hard to be comfortable with someone who is dressed formally, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. particularly if it's not a formal situation. Well, and uh, I think about like, if you were to look at two um, icons or ro- yeah, icons, you have Carrie Bradshaw on one, uh, on one end mm-hmm. and you have Audrey Hepburn on the other, right? right? You had this over the top, you know, too much, like it was gaudy. Mm-hmm. Carrie Bradshaw was gaudy mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. And then you had Audrey Hepburn, who was just the height of elegance. Right. And elegance, but you could picture her in a, in a sweatshirt. Yeah. And with someone in a, a sweatshirt, um, uh, you could picture cuddling on the couch in mm-hmm. front of the fire. Uh, if someone is formal, there's, there's kind of this layer between the two of you. Yeah, yeah. there is. Yeah. There is. And, uh, you know, going back to someone like Carrie Bradshaw, I could imagine that most men, that many men would feel uncomfortable walking into a room with her. I mean, it was so over the, her, st- her style was so over the top that I would think any man would feel awkward <laughs> walking into a party or into a room with a woman who's overstylized like that. Well, also the feeling is that she's very much into herself. Ah. Um, and into how she looks, the exact makeup, that everything has to be perfect. Wow. And there's, it, it lacks it's comfort. Yeah. yeah, it lacks comfort. It lacks comfort. Yeah. Beautifully said. Um, You know, so, yeah. So everyone, you know, is entitled to her own style and what makes her feel good. But if a woman's overly stylized, many men are going to see it as a costume rather than an expression of individuality. Uh Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the solution, honey, to that? Well, you know, on a first date, Often less is is more. Mm-hmm. You know that that um, you, one is trying to impress the guy with who they are, not mm-hmm. not with what they wear. Mm-hmm. And just like if a woman sat across from a man and he was just trying to give all his credentials and and um, you know all of that, you don't really see who he is. You know he's really trying to impress, and it doesn't work. It doesn't hit the mark. You know, it's just like, oh, <laughs> and who are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think and and how can I fit into your life? Yeah, I mean, you're so elegant, and you, you know, you're an amazing dresser, and you wear beautiful, you know, hot quality things. But you're never, you know, e- even though you have a beautiful watch, it's very understated, uh-huh. and you know, 
you're you're very elegant, yeah. but un, but so understated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's incredible. And I think that impresses the man with mm-hmm. the woman that that she could be elegant and understated and understated and comfortable mm-hmm. to be with. Yeah, and that you a man could see an entry how he could fit into her life, how they could be on a couch together in front of a fire, how they could be, you know, just walking around a, a, in, a, in a foreign city, you know, on vacation. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. And he would just feel at ease and proud to be with her. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also he has a sense that she would be at ease with the people that they would meet together, whether it's on vacation or introducing, you know, to, to friends mm-hmm. that there's not, uh, she's not this icon, you know, yeah. with just, just, you know, with, you know, all the makeup and all the jewelry and, you know, all but these it, things. It makes yeah. a woman look like a doll, mm-hmm. like a dress up doll yeah, and not a person. Yeah. A caricature. A caricature. Yeah. Huh. And that's something that we also really encourage when we're working with women in our pro, you know, in our program, is to soften and take off some of the makeup and dress down, you know, and be willing. It's important to dress like to dress well yeah. and to to put thought and care into your appearance. I mean, that is important, but tastefully, not not over the top and not looking like a caricature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a couple of other things, you know, about dressing on dates, like there's a rule of thumb that if you want to show your assets, right? So if you have an asset, something that is particularly striking about you, like you have a beautiful long neck or you have great legs, it's fine to show that off and dress to flatter your assets or your Maybe you have a beautiful slim waist, so you want to wear something that's going to show your hourglass figure. But you don't want to do like if you're gonna if you're going to show off your legs and wear a shorter skirt or something that shows your legs, you don't want to then have cleavage as well. Mm-hmm. So you highlight one asset at a time. Right. And if you have cleavage, you want to leave something for the imagination. You know, yeah, you never you, you never want to overdo <laughs> anything, whether it's legs or cleavage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can show a little decoupage, yeah. and when you lean forward, a absolutely, guy's gonna go oh, uh, absolutely. Uh huh. But it doesn't have to be like right. plunging right. <laughs> to to expose everything. And one other, you know, one other rule of thumb would be if you're going to, you know, if you have a stunning you know, accessory, a special piece. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wearing a fabulous coat, you know, that has a fur collar or a great pair of boots, whatever. But you also need only one of those. Uh You could have, we we were at a... um, at a market, uh, a folk art market here in Santa Fe, and I bought these gorgeous boots from Uzbekistan. But I wouldn't want to wear those Uzbeki boots with you know a lot of other crazy mm-hmm. wild things because in and of themselves they're enough. Mm-hmm. So one real one conversation piece, one standout accessory, mm-hmm. not tons of them, mm-hmm. right? And if you do that, you're going to be fine. Like, I think one thing and highlight one asset. Right. And I, I think the bottom line is, is a man wants to be able to relate with a woman. Mm-hmm. And he wants to feel comfortable. And he also wants to envision what the future would be like. And, you know, if she's really comfortable in not so much dressing down, but just comfortable in what she wears, which is not what couture is, right. uh, but comfortable, then he pictures being comfortable with her in the future. Mm-hmm. And that, and most importantly, or along with that, she's comfortable in her own skin. So she doesn't have to perform by, you know, putting, you know, these accoutrements on, right. these accessories, that she's comfortable in her own skin. She can, you know, look 
great in, in a cashmere sweater because it feels good to her, hmm. you know, and a sweatshirt feels good, you know, uh, a silk blouse may f- feel good, mm-hmm. but a man could feel when a woman is uncomfortable, uh, right. like, like in high heels and they're, they're trying to navigate, you know, walking from the car to the restaurant. <laughs> 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 I, I am a, you know, I, I, I'm in the field of physical therapy. And I remember one client came in with all these feet and ankle problems. And, and uh, she said, yeah, they didn't have valet parking. And I had to walk to the restaurant. And she said, these shoes were never meant for walking. <laughs> I know who that was. Right. <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. On that note, let's go to number three, babe. You want to read that? Well, no man feels comfortable in a date um, sitting across from someone whose life seems like a constant soap opera where she's just recapitulating dramas and stories. And they're often, they often could be negative. And you know, the man just is is more of an audience than a participant. It's more of a monologue than a, than a dialogue. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of the way we would talk to our girlfriends, mm-hmm. you know, where, oh, my God, you won't believe what happened. Or did you hear about so-and-so and whatever? And the guy is sitting there like he's flipping through the pages of Us magazine right. or something. And he's just, his he's going cross-eyed. Right, you know, there's there's often no entry mm-hmm. for for conversation for mm-hmm. for dialogue, but it's just like, uh huh, oh wow, that's terrible, oh no, I'm so sorry that happened, <laughs> <laughs> it was just... and he doesn't know it's kind of torturous for men because they don't know if they're if the woman wants help and advice right right? if he can be heroic and like solve the problem for her if she's just wanting to emote and trying to just like he's just supposed to sit there and listen but it's painful yeah you know a man could feel like one of those dolls that you pull the string (laughs) and and a a different answer comes out like oh wow or that's terrible (laughs) or i can't imagine Wow, he acted inappropriately. You know? <laughs> Each time you pull the string, you get a different answer. <laughs> but you know, and, and the guy is just grateful for some something to say. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's hilarious. You know, I I remember one day, you know, some time ago, um, where. It was a blind date, and um, we went to a, a nice restaurant, you know, a very nice restaurant in Los Angeles, and and uh, and from the time we had gotten in, I picked her up at her at her apartment. By the time we got, b- before we even left her apartment, it was a story about her boss, how terrible he was, about problems with her brother, <laughs> and it continued through the drive, and it continued into the into the, the meal at the restaurant. And, you know, it was just like listening and listening. And <laughs> the waiter had already served the, the second, like the entree. And I had already had, you know, the appetizer and, and finishing my entree. And she was still on her salad. And because she was talking so much and I couldn't bear it another moment. And, you know, she lifted her fork, and I, I just leaned in, and the, I summoned the waiter, and I said, "Would you like that to go?" I just couldn't. I couldn't take another oh my moment. God. Oh my god! <laughs> it may have been the rudest thing, but it was. It, at that point, it was just survival. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Wow. You know, I I listen, and I'm just sitting here, and I know I did this on dates. I know I did. I know I did. And I'm sure, you know, thank God we don't have to go backwards in time and yeah. relive our most painful yeah. moments. Because as you're describing this, I can see myself doing that. And you know I still had some of those behaviors 
you know, not not telling horrible bad stories, mm. but where I could go into old stories and you know run my tapes or sometimes not even old stories, but you could be very excited about something you learned mm -hmm. while you were getting your your degree in uh, spiritual yeah. psychology. Yeah, and um, you know it was interesting, and I was glad that you were excited about it, but as something relatable, uh, there's a point where man is just an audience and he begins to tune it out, no matter how interesting, because it's not enlivening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and partly you would let me know, there were times where you would let me know. And I started to witness when I could see you pulling away. I had one relationship end. I, I know the moment it ended. Uh, that a, a woman, you know, a, a lovely lady, you know, really, really liked her, but she could get so caught up into what she just read or that she was reading me something and it was, it was like, it was never going to end. And we were in her living room and I was slowly moving towards the door like she wouldn't notice that I would be gone. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> And she saw it, and you know, and that was pretty much the end of the relationship. You know, and I really want to put a high, like a frame around that because many women have experienced that feeling with a man, right? And they will immediately get angry at the guy and say, "You're not listening to me. You're not paying attention," and and all. And I think it's important for the women to stop if you see that happening with your guy or with, you know, men that you date. But if you notice that men tune you out and it's something not just with one guy, but you see it happening, you may be exhibiting this behavior and men are just tuning you out yeah. and pulling away. They lose interest because you're just droning on and on. Yeah. 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 Oh, scary. Yeah, and, and the joke is there's a 12-step program for that, and it's called <laughs> On and On and On. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. But we think it's because you're not interested and you're not listening. But a lot of times we're talking to you the way we would talk to our girlfriends. And it really is, uh, how do you say it? It's repelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the converse is true, that... We've talked to many women, mm -hmm. many, yes. many, many, who have sat across from a guy and they said, all he did was talk about himself. He never asked me one question mm -hmm. about, you know, and all he did, we spent, you know, two and a half hours I spent listening to him and it was torture. She would never want to see the guy again, yeah. you know, socially. Yeah, men do it too. Yeah. Men do it too. But I, but I do think there's a bit of a, you know, just a fine distinction in that men do it, well, they do it for a different reason. Well, I think men do it to try to impress a woman, to try to prove themselves. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes when women do it, and I don't mean to make too much of a generalization, yeah. but a man could feel like she's told this story before. You know, she's, you know, this is an old story, and I don't know if she says this on every date, mm -hmm. or, um, but there's there's not a freshness, there's not an aliveness to it. Mm -hmm. Like these are her stories, or this mm. is her what she does, and yeah. these are the things she talks about. God, I used to do all of those things, mm -hmm. all of them, and it's really listening to you talk. I mean, I can see just how unattractive that would be. I mean, the other like. The difference now, of course, that's also a sign of living in the past mm. in some ways, you know, recapitulating stuff. It is a, a, a you're not in the present moment when you're telling stories from the past, no. you know, or even if you're excited about something, but if you're running tapes or stories, it takes you out of the present moment. Yeah. So yeah. that's the difference. I think at least in our, our relationship, we're very present and we're really in the mm -hmm. present moment. We're almost, yeah. unless we're having a fond memory of, you know, Milo or something from the past, yeah. you know, or we're just. Well, I think men 
are looking for a woman who who is playful mm-hmm. um, and and to have fun with. You know, on our first date, you know, I asked you what you're looking you, what you're looking for, and you you said, you know, I've done all this work on myself for all these years, and I'm looking for a man to you know have fun with have fun with, and I just silently put my hands together and said, thank you, God. <laughs> and we've been together ever since. You know, I mean, I uh, literally, we've been together ever since. And that's yeah. been almost 20 years now. Almost 20 yeah. years. Uh, so, you know, when we get into our stories, there's no spontaneity. There's mm-hmm. no playfulness. There's no humor. Right. Uh, there's none of the things that a man and, and woman would be looking for to be with a partner for the rest of their lives because mm-hmm. they want they want fun. They may have done their work. They may have had the hard incidents in their lives and the stories in the past, and now they're they're really looking for someone to be joyful with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Let's talk about like how do you get out of this behavior? What what you know? It's what we need to identify it, but then, what is the solution for this? I mean, one thing is you know being aware that when you're telling your stories of the past or telling stories, you're most often not in the present moment, and you're 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 over here somewhere, but you're not connecting right here. Absolutely. So you really want to almost put yourself in the other person's place and see what it would be what it would feel like to be hearing the story that one is telling Mm -hmm. and also that it's true for men as well but uh for a man listening to a story sometimes the story could be circuitous and vague right and there may not be a there 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 may not be a point and as you mentioned before he doesn't know how to respond, whether to offer suggestions or where the story is leading to mm-hmm. um, and could be jumping from point to point. And he's just trying to follow it and eventually begins to tune out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a um, couple of solutions. It's important to understand that men are not your therapist and uh, they're not your girlfriends, mm-hmm. right? So the way you would talk to your therapist or your girlfriend, a guy just, he can't follow that. He can't follow um, a nebulous story that's just, you know, where you where you may process with a girlfriend who would say, oh, well, t- you know, gosh, that's awful. Or maybe he wanted, meant this, or mm-hmm. what, you know, maybe he meant that. But a guy can't follow that. So if you share stories, you want to get to the point because men are always looking for the point, right? right. right. Like they, you got to get to the point. And I'll elaborate on that. But this, the, the last thing is choose topics. Like don't just pick random things that are happening in your life. You know, you've got to relate that to the person that you're, talking to you've got to either make you've got to make it relatable and and even ask yourself if it's something he'd even be interested in hearing about you know like a lot of times we just talk about whatever's forefront in our mind at that moment but it may the the guy sitting across from you may not be interested at all about the fact that you went shopping the other day and left your credit card and you know, and then you got a t- traffic, a ticket speeding, <laughs> you know, whatever. He may just not be interested in that, even if that's, you know, you're upset about it and it's on your mind. Uh-huh. Or if something's on your mind, <clears throat> one might just say, I just have to get, get this, this out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's, let's get real. Yeah. You know, uh, you know with, you know, conversation. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I, I, this is, is just this just happened? I just have to clear it so I can be as present as possible with you. Right, but don't think like don't try to get the guy to commiserate with you yeah. about it. That's yeah. gonna fail really mm-hmm. quickly. So a few steps you can take to change the behavior. All right. Mm-hmm. So um, 
you want so we wrote, you know, you want to con- you want the story to connect the two of you and not leave him scratching his head right. and waiting for the date to be over. So before telling a story, stop and ask yourself, why is this story important to share and what do I hope to accomplish by sharing it? Right. And with what you're sharing, is it going to bring the two of you closer together? Is it going to share your hearts? and your minds and your spirits? Or is it going to create kind of a layer of separation where the guy is just an audience? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So really think about, or, you know, if you're going to share the story, um, maybe even ask for his input. You know, if you want to share a story with a guy, that's okay. But make him feel useful in that, you know, uh. men want to feel useful. So another tool is by make to help him feel useful, ask for his input. Mm-hmm. How would you handle this? What would you have done in that situation? What do you think I could have done differently exactly. or done better? That is going to turn a man on instead of turn him off. Yeah, absolutely. That would be really, really mm-hmm. sexy to do that. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, You know, women can seem vague and ambiguous to men or circuitous, as Benjamin said earlier. So if you're going to share something, a story or something with a man, be sure to make a clear point. So if you're guilty of, of just being kind of ambiguous or circuitous every time you tell a story, and I'm not even just talking on a date, but but you really may want to start to focus yourself To do that, what you can do is get in the habit of saying the point of this story Uh, is, or the reason I'm telling you this story Mm -hmm. is, Mm -hmm. and that Mm -hmm. will solve you so Uh many problems, (laughs) but you want to start getting to the point, you know, um, in our course and we find a lot of women and especially women who do not understand men and who have been to too much therapy or women who love to sit and commiserate with their girlfriends. They do not, not know how to get to the point. And just a fine point on that, not too much therapy, but being stuck in therapy, being stuck in therapy. Yeah. 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 They just, they go on and on and on And they'll tell you every little detail. And then he said this and she did that. And I said this. And, you know, it's just, I don't think many of us are aware of how we really can cut to the chase much quicker. (laughs) And especially for women, I would practice cutting to the chase. And including men in the the conversation. conversation. Yeah. Yeah, every once in a while saying, what do you think about that? What are your thoughts on, you know, I'd love to get your input or, you know, tell me what you're thinking. Yeah, There's ways to connect with a guy like that. Yeah, and if a man is going on and on, one of the key phrases is, may I pause you for a moment? (laughs) (laughs) And it's a gentle way of of stopping people and perhaps changing the channel Mm -hmm. so that it's a more relatable date rather than, you know, just going home, rolling your eyes and calling your, your girlfriend. Yeah. And saying, this was, you know, you, Excru- I, yeah, <laughs> excruciating. Yeah. And, and also when you say, may I pause you for a moment, don't say to the guy, you've been talking all about yourself, <laughs> you know, I'd love to get a word in edgewise, or why don't you ask me something about myself? But just very gently say, may I pause you for a moment? There's something I would like to share with you, or there's something I wanted to add to this conversation. But you can do that artfully without making the guy wrong or shaming Mm -hmm. him. And some of you uh, invite that behavior from men because you just sit there and listen and let them drone on and on. And they will. And you do need to stop them and interject. But mm-hmm. some of you are also not good at just inserting yourself into a conversation. 
So take responsibility for that as well. Yeah. If you keep finding that you're going on date after date after date where mm -hmm. men, all they do is talk about themselves, if there's a repetition there, it may not be the men. It may mm -hmm. be that they're they're also just going on and on because you don't put yourself out mm -hmm. there and you're not adding much to the conversation. You're, you listen too much and you don't share enough. So just to be aware of that. Well, this has been amazing, yeah. babe. This has been, I think, another really awesome, awesome talk. Thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're getting inside this male mind here. <laughs> I love you. Love you. Um, all right. Well, thank you once again for doing this and being willing to share yourself. I know that uh, um, this is something that you do for me and for for you know for others. It's a way that you are of service. But I also know that it wouldn't be your own personal choice to be here, <laughs> just on your own. So thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. And to find more about your program? Yes, you can do that. Well, first of all, you know, rate and like my YouTube channel and my podcast. You can find the podcast on Spotify, Apple, Audible, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Also, if you have topics that you would love for us to cover, you can drop me an email and you can do that. You send it to DWD, which stands for Dating Without Drama, dwdpod at gmail.com. Please send us your ideas. We really want to make these relevant to everybody. So, And we get our best suggestions from you. And you can also go to lisashield.com and you can find my free 45-minute presentation, which I urge you to watch and stay to the end. And if you feel that you qualify, I list the qualifiers. If you qualify for a breakthrough call, we will set up a call either with me or a member of my team. And we will talk to you about how we can help you find the guardian of your soul. So... Thank you for coming on. We will see you next week and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.